Good afternoon. Welcome back to the BNH Virtual Event Space. Today, we are going to be bringing event decor to life with lighting. Of course, that is hosted by Hobo Light. And for that, I would like to welcome photographer Corbin Gherkin. Corbin, how's it going? Hi, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. We're excited to have you on. You have the wonderful set up there. I always love when I log on and someone's got a nicely lit room. We already know the decor is going to be there. Mine needs a little work. It's a little college frat boyish, but uh, we're going to we're gonna leave it to you, the, the real expert here. I do want to welcome in the background, Danielle from Hobolite, who's going to be there to answer any of you guys' questions. So if you guys have any technical questions about the gear, Danielle's on hand to answer those. And Corbin, you're the expert for the next hour, so I'm going to turn it over to you and I'll see you in a bit for some Q&A. Thank you so much. I'm really excited to be here. A little intro on me. I am a destination wedding photographer. I'm based in New Jersey. And uh, a little background, I came to wedding photography. Actually, my first job as a photographer was working for a commercial photographer who photographed catalogs of like chocolate covered nuts and uh holiday gift wrapping, like the ones that you would sell at school and earn money for a fundraiser. And it was a really um, kind of, maybe not an inspirational type of photography, but it was certainly a technical environment that got me interested in photography. And that was in high school. From there, I also got a job for a wedding photographer in my hometown. And I just loved weddings, but I went off to school for photography. I went to New York um, to NYU to study photography and learned a lot of different skills in school, learned about lighting, learned about photojournalism, learned about fine art photography, but I just kept on coming back to weddings. And after trying any way to not be a wedding photographer, I just, I think I found that I was really wired for it and decided this is what I have to pursue. So I am 20 years plus in as a wedding photographer now. Um, it's an absolutely incredible job. It takes me all over the world. Um, I've really been able to see some amazing things through this profession and this career, but uh, B&H has always been in the background of my photography career and you know certainly in those early days living in New York and going back when it was like the little carts up in the ceiling um I just loved it so in many ways it feels like a part of that journey for me um so I am talking to you today about event decor and lighting event decor and this is something that I think I've become a bit known for in the wedding photography world someone who really approaches uh, photographing decor with a lot of intention placing a lot of importance on composition and a natural style of lighting really honoring what the designer or the um, planner has put together for a wedding day and using that as a really wonderful heirloom for the couple. So I, um, I'm going to take you through some of my process. Um, you know, I was coming to the Hobo Light brand in a little bit of a roundabout way. Actually, I was getting ready for a destination wedding in Italy, and I was really concerned about the travel. And we've all been in that situation where the weight limitations are an issue and you're getting onto a small plane or you're getting onto a plane in Europe where they're really restrictive about gear. So I was before that trip, just super stressed. And as many of us have done, you know, just combing the B&H website, um, you know, trying to figure out what would be a solution for my stands, because I knew that I needed uh, stands to be able to do some of my off-camera flash and some of my lighting. Um, so I, discovered the hobo light stands uh, my husband had said he's an educator as well and he had said look at these stands like he hadn't tried them but the carbon fiber was really great they were lightweight so i just happened to be in new york and i stopped by bnh went to the back and i wanted to check out the stands and uh, the sales rep was there and just kind of walked me through it. He said, yep, these are a new product, but they're really solid. I loved the design. And I was sold immediately. Like I brought those stands on that project. But what was interesting about these stands, I mean, it seems a little funny to say, but they were just so beautifully constructed. And I thought, like, I, surely this isn't just a stand company. And I wanted to learn more about them. So I looked up Hobo Light, discovered that they are really a lighting company that has happens to have 
great stands. Um, and I discovered it from there. So I have really gone all in on incorporating Hobo Light into my workflow. And um, they've really been such a game changer for me. I mean, again, the portability of these lights is really fantastic for a destination wedding photographer. I fit pretty much all of my Hobo Light gear goes into my carry-on. Um, it's just, it's such a great setup. But let's get into actually using these lights, seeing what they look like in this setup, um, and talking about lighting decor. So you're in my living room right now. And right now I have the Avant light set up. Um, here's my table. I'm going to go ahead. I want you all to see what this room looks like with no lights on. So I'm going to turn off my main light here. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn off this hobo light as well. Um, so you can see we are in a very dark room. It's a kind of overcast gray day in New Jersey. And I'm going to go ahead and turn this back on. So I've put this light on at about 38% and it's daylight balanced. Um, I'm going to add my fill light back in a little bit here. We don't need quite so much on it. So when I'm thinking about lighting a table, I really want to make sure that my lighting process is natural. I want it to feel like I'm enhancing the light that already exists in the existed in the wedding environment. I don't want to add my own lighting design to, um, to a reception because a lot of thought has been put into that already. So I'm definitely approaching it from the point of view that I'm trying to just kind of bump up the uh, exposure a little bit. I'm trying to get a little bit more fill light into the environment. So I've set up one Hobo Light Avant, um, and this is battery powered. It lasts for an hour on full power, but I never use it on full power. Um, so I've set up the Avant with the lantern modifier. And normally what I would do is set that kind of at the corner of um, a reception table. And the reason why I like that is, first of all, giving it a little bit of an ele elevation. We're trying to mimic the sun here. So I'm giving a little bit of elevation to the light so that the light sort of spreads across the table. And you get some really beautiful highlights in the glassware. You get some nice shadows. Um, and I find that that just gives more dimension to the light. Um, and then, you know, what I would do on top of that, I have my Avant here. If I wanted to add some additional fill light back into the space, I would take, um, I do have the mini light and I love this light because this is one that I can literally just put this on another table, maybe behind this table, turn it on and let's see, I'm going to turn this on here. So this is at 8%, which even this close is just probably too much light, but you see where it can give a little bit of a highlight to the glassware and it'll just fill in those florals really nicely. So for me, when I'm thinking about lighting, I really want everything to just feel very balanced. Um, you know, I'm trying to create an environment that highlights the beautiful flowers. I'm trying to catch the detail in, you know, the linens. I'm trying to make sure that all of those elements are really standing out really nicely. Um, but, you know, we were joking a little bit before we signed on to this because, you know, it's like, what am I going to talk about on a demo when it really takes about 90 seconds to set up this entire uh, lighting setup? And that's what's so wonderful about these lights as well. Like, it's something that I can very quickly set up on a wedding day. I can move it from one point of the room to the other. They're just fantastic lights. And um, and they've really just been such an asset to my process. But um, I, you know, I use them on weddings, absolutely. But I also use them in my studio. And I've brought here... Um, I'm going to adjust this light up front so you can see a little bit better. Um, and this is the pro light off camera, which I love. I mean, if you can travel with the pro on an event, it's fantastic. It's a really powerful light. I mean, I have it at 17% right now. And this light is just kind of a game changer when it comes to really needing to fill 
a very large space. Um, you know, it's still portable. It's totally something I can pack in my luggage, but um, but probably not a carry-on type of light. But where I really do often use the pro light is in my studio when I'm setting up, um, you know, a still life or a flat lay. So I do have a setup here of a flat lay. I'm gonna see if I can pull this in, see if you all can see this here. So this is an invitation suite that I've set up and I'm gonna show you the final photo of this later on, but I would light this in a really similar way. Um, I would want the lighting to be a little bit more direct onto the set. So if I'm setting up my camera, you know, let's say I'm here on my tripod and I probably have a side arm that goes over the set. Um, I'm then gonna set my light up on this side and I'm gonna come around and show you that. So I'm gonna have my light set up here and I'm gonna lower this down a little bit so we're a little bit closer to the set. Um, now, one thing that I like to do with flat lay photography, I really like to even out uh, the entire light kind of coming across. So a lot of times I just pop a scrim into that set. So let me open this up. And then I would put the scrim here, the light behind it, and that way I can adjust the light accordingly so I can really see where you know, I soften the shadows. I don't have any harsh shadows, um, but it does feel like it's just lit by sunlight, which is really my objective when I'm working on weddings. I just want everything to feel very natural, um, very soft. I'm definitely not a photographer that incorporates a lot of artificial looking lighting into my work. I don't tend to go with color gels or um, really happy lighting. I like it to just feel soft and natural lit by the sun. So for me, these have just been perfect in doing that. Um, but really that's all it is. Like even with this particular setup, you wouldn't necessarily even have to put on that lantern modifier. You would just put your bare light, either your mini or your Avant, on a stand pointing towards the flat lay, and then you would put the scrim in front of that and it would completely soften it. But I'll show you that later as well. Um, and then, you know, if you're thinking about how do we want to try a few different things with the lighting, like, you know, absolutely, you can just come straight on and have, you know, a really beautiful kind of soft look, but I just think that when I set it, you know, at a little bit of a, an angle, it just gives a lot more dimension. So that's how I tend to do it. Um, make sure we have enough light back here. Um, so you'll also see, I'm gonna show you some examples later of shots that I've taken with the Hobo lights. And um, I'm gonna show you a couple of different angles where I would place them. So I do, you know, this is pretty much my standard, kind of pointing at a corner, going diagonally across. And like I said, the reason why I really love that is it gives these nice, natural, but longer shadows uh, to the glassware. Um, and I think that that's really beautiful. You can also kind of come from behind. I'll lift this up. And... I actually really love what the light does when I have it behind my set and then I'm using it as a little bit of a backlight. So it's kind of creating something that feels similar to say the light that you would get from a dance floor or a spotlight on a wedding. Um, so I, I love how it creates a beautiful rim light. And then Either I'm going to pop a little bit of fill light back in, or I'm just going to bump up my exposure and, um, you know, make sure that I've got the right exposure for the florals. Maybe they're being lit by the ambient light in the room. And then that um, hobo light is functioning as sort of like a backlight, like a flare light, which I really like that effect as well. Um, but I think that we can go ahead and go into actually looking at some of these photos and I can talk you through um, some of the setups. So this is the 
table set up here. And I photographed this this morning. And what I like about this, I mean, it's really an even light, it's really soft. It feels like you get the detail on the florals. There aren't really contrasty shadows, but I like that, uh, you know, you get dimension to that table. Um, so this was shot um, at about F2 because I wanted to sort of blur out uh, the background a little bit and, you know, just get like a little bit of creamy dreamy to the to the photos for, for weddings. I think that tends to be my approach. Um, let's go. So this one was two lights with this setup. This was the Avant, um, in the corner going diagonally across as you saw. And then I just set the mini down, uh, on a chair back behind the table. And that gave a little bit of that highlight in the glassware. Uh, it's such an easy setup. I mean, I, it really, it's just so quick and simple. Um, let's go to the next slide. And you can see a couple more. Um, and you know what I like about this is it feels like this could just be a table that, you know, is in a tent setup where you're getting a little bit of that side directional light. It feels like this could be a table in a restaurant that has some window light. Um, nothing about this says to me flash or, you know, artificial light. It just feels really soft and natural. And I, and I think that's super effective. Let's go to the next one. So... Yes, like absolutely the hobo lights shine in this type of environment. And this is a really, you know, pretty standard lighting setup for me. But a lot of times I'll get to a job and there's a really warm environment like a barn or, um, you know, something that has a lot of brown wood. And that's a little bit of a challenge on the lighting side because it would be my inclination to sort of set everything to daylight and um, have really a cool tone light. And when I get into those environments, it just sort of looks strange to have that. Like you want to have some of that warmth to the room and you want to make sure that you're balancing out like what you're getting from that ambient light with your um, with your artificial light that you're adding in. So uh, this was a winery reception. I went a little bit cool in the background to sort of pick up some of those flowers and, and make sure that you know, the light felt clean, but then I allowed the ambient light of the candle light to kind of pop back in there to pull in some of that warmth. Um, this was a single um, hobo light set up on that back corner. You can see where it sort of creates an interesting shadow across the table um, and just really quick and easy setup. Um, I do like to work on a tripod. I just feel like when I'm working on a tripod, I can take a look at my scene, I can set up my composition, and then I can move my light around. So I can take that shot and then I can move the light and say, okay, like I really want a little bit more fill light here, or I want a little bit more interest to the shadows. So I find that if I set up on a tripod, I'm only changing that one element, which is the light. And I think that that's absolutely the way to do it. Um, let's move to the next slide. Yeah, so this was a, this was during the day, but not on a particularly well lit day. And um, this was a beautiful table put together by Gregory Blake Sams. And I wanted this to just feel like it was lighting within, you know, an, an apartment. And I took the light, the Avant light, put that on the right side of the table and just had that light cascade across. Um, it's just soft, it's pretty, you're not thinking about the lighting, which I think is what's really important in my work. Like I, I want it to feel like it just exists naturally in that space. Um, so this was a, a great setup with the Avant. And this one also did not have a modifier on it, but I did have the light pointed slightly up so that it probably was bouncing on the wall that was to the left of that table and it was adding a little bit of fill light back in. Um, and that's another way that I love to use these lights. You know, if I get into a space and let's say I don't want to set up the lantern, like it feels like too much in an environment and I still want a really soft light, I would then maybe take the hobo light and point it um, at an opposite wall so that it's just essentially lighting that whole wall and creating a giant fill card to bounce back into my room. 
Let's go to the next one. Yeah, so this was a New York wedding, um, downtown, really dark environment. Um, there was some harsh uh, spotlight type lights, uh, stage type lights in the restaurant, but otherwise um, really nothing. So I wanted to make sure that I maintained the interest in the dimension of the light, you know, with the, the contrast of the linens and the shadows on the table, but I didn't want that to be the light that was coming across that food. I wanted that white plate to be really white, really clean. So this was a similar sort of setup where I had the hobo light in the left corner, allowed that um, light to sort of cascade across. Um, and this was powered down super low. Like this is just very little power to achieve this. Um, and that's also what I'm really enjoying about these because the battery just lasts for such a long time. I mean, I love that I can bring an extra battery to a job, but I very rarely go through two of them on, you know, a 12 hour wedding day. So they're really fantastic uh, for that as well. Let's go ahead to the next. Yeah, so this is a job that I just shot last weekend. And similarly, this was one of those dark barn types and type of environments. And when I got in there, you know, it had this really beautiful blue linen, but everything just looked really orange, really warm, very dark. Um, so I set up the hobo light on the far right of that table, just out of frame. And I kind of allowed it to just cascade across. Uh, you can sort of see where it creates some interesting shadows on that close-up shot of the place setting. Um, and I like that because I feel like we maintain the candlelight. You know, we have that sparkle of the glassware, um, but you're still getting a lot of dimension. It's not that, I think we've all been to those jobs where, you know, it's lit by tungsten light. It's like a very yellow, orange kind of um I think of it as a muddy light. Uh, it's not clean. So I love what I'm able to achieve with these um, and doing that. And and it's just, you know, such a quick setup. So on this one, I have the light on the far right side. And I think I did set up in the background, um, back left, I popped in uh, an additional light back there just to pop a little bit of light onto uh, that stone wall back behind the, the mantle. Um, but you know, a two light setup is really totally great for this big of a room and it creates a lot of dimension. Let's go to the next one. Okay. Yeah, so these lights, like I said, they're so great for decor and that it's definitely my, I would say it's sort of my main use for them on a wedding because that is the, environment where I just don't know what I'm going to get when I get into a reception room. I mean, I I tend to shoot in environments where there's been so much thought put thought put into the design, but it could be that there's a vision for like absolutely stunning candlelight. And as we know as photographers, we can't light exclusively with candlelight. So I um you know I find these to be really useful in that, but I have been playing with them lately on uh, portraits as well. And the reason why is, you know, as a photographer who's been shooting as long as I've been shooting, you know, I'm no longer in that place in my career where I can get to a job and it's a super rainy day or it's an overcast day and say like, well, well, it's raining and this light's just going to look flat and um, a little bit blah. I mean, it's someone's wedding and they have an expectation that I really know how to make it look sparkle, sparkly and, you know, I know how to make it look uh, magical. So I have been using the lights lately to add a little bit of um, just a little something into those really overcast days. Danielle, let's pop that photo back on, if you don't mind, that shows uh, the bride with the bouquet. So this room was actually really similar uh, to the room that I'm in now. It was very dark, but I got into that space. And as you can tell, I love a blue space. I love a blue environment. And I got into this room. It was the father of the groom's study. And I just thought, oh, like this is the perfect environment. But that wall behind the bride, completely dark, completely flat. You know, the window was not 
facing towards the sun at that time of day. So I wasn't really getting anything but a silhouette from that window. So I was talking to my team and we decided let's put the pro light outside of that window so that we get the same effect as sunlight coming through. Um, so we set up the pro on really high power um, and it really, it sort of poured into that room. And I love the shadow that it created with the window panes on the backdrop, but you can see in that really pretty um, close-up shot of the bouquet, I mean, you get such a nice softness to the um, the fabric of the bride's dress and, and kind of getting that luminance that comes back in. And then, you know, as far as bouncing that light back into the bouquet, which, you know, with florals, you do really wanna make sure that they have some nice light on the front of them. That's really just a matter of, um, you know, adding a fill card. A lot of times I'm on a wedding, I'll grab a pillowcase if that's a little bit easier, just to pop that light back in. But it's so soft, it's so pretty. Um, it absolutely, you know, achieves what I'm trying to do with my photography style. Let's pop to the next slide. Yeah, so this is that invitation flat lay that I have set up here. Um, this is what that light looked like. So I have the light set up on uh, the top of the frame, as I showed you, a scrim sandwiched in between, and then I have the set. It's just, um, you know, shot as a flat lay overhead, but feels like it could be outside, which I love because, you know, I also do some product photography and I don't want to rely so heavily on just having a nice day or that the light isn't going to change in my studio. So it really allows for a lot of consistency there. Um, and, you know, I do a lot of work on styling and decor. I have a course on photographing wedding decor, and this is a really big part of that education. Flat lays are intimidating. They're complicated. It's such a simple looking shot, but they can be tedious to set up. And what I love is that I've gotten so dialed into that setup now that, I mean, this is literally, this is a five minute shot tops for me. Um, and it's so fantastic that you can work that quickly. Um, you know, if you have clean lighting on, on your wedding day or your event day. Um, let's go ahead to the next one. Yeah. So portability, um, this is so huge for me. I mean, I, like I said, I am traveling a lot for weddings and I think I just have such anxiety about getting to that flight and the person at the check-in desk, like lifting my very heavy gear and saying, you can't board with that. And, and I have been in that position many a time over the years. And it's just stressful. Um, it's not how you wanna go into a job worrying about your gear. And so finding gear that is lightweight but doesn't sacrifice quality has always been really important to me. Um, you know, previously I was using, I think I had Manfrotto stands, great stands, super solid, been around forever, um, but they're big. And I had to travel with a whole separate uh, kit for my stands. I couldn't just set them down into my um, into my carry on or even into my checked luggage. Um, but I really love that the Hobo lights are so portable. I'll um I'll grab a couple of these pieces of gear so that you all can see. Um, so this is one of the stands, and it really reminds me of like a carbon fiber carbon fiber tripod. I mean. Similar sort of setup. Um, let me take this part for you. Um, you know, it's has the um, the locking legs. Gonna undo this. Hold on. Yeah. So you just loosen this. You know, really smooth, like super smooth design. Um, and then these just function the way like a normal carbon tri fiber tripod leg would just up and down. Um, but they're just, they're really compact, super lightweight, um, but they feel sturdy. Um, you know, so don't worry about the lights falling down, but for safety, you can always, you know, clip onto this a sandbag, or there's also a feature on the bottom that you can pull out and clip your sandbag onto. Um, but the stands are great. I mean, highly recommend those. And let me just tighten that back up. 
And then this is, uh, this is the Avant also so small. And this is, you know, this is their medium size light, but honestly I can throw it in my camera bag. Um, they also have the mini and that one is even more compact. Comes with a little tripod, which I love. Um, and, you know, we were talking about, I was talking with Danielle earlier about sort of how I look at these kits and what's valuable to me. I personally like a kit where it's just sort of everything is there. It's ready to use. And so I really like the creator kits because I don't have to think about the accessories. It has everything I need. It has, you know, the light modifiers. It has um, the tripod. It has the clamps. It has the battery attachments. Um, so I love that that's been thought out. And and I, I use all of those kits. So I use the Avant Creator Kit. I have the mini creator kit. I've added on um, the lantern modifiers to my kit. And then I um, have a couple of, well, I think at this point I probably have four stands um, in some different sizes, um, but they're they're fantastic. Let's, uh, Daniel, let's move to, I think we have my kit up next and then maybe, yeah. I mean, you can see it, they're just, it's really small. You know, it travels so nicely. Um, so this is what, I have in my sort of standard event kit. We have the Avant, the Mini, the Micro is great. I don't do a lot of those my, those macro photos of rings, but it would be definitely valuable in that type of application. Um, but it's also super useful when you just need a little bit of light. Like you don't want to disrupt the mood. You just need to pop a little bit of light into a subject. You know, maybe at the reception dial in that uh, color temperature and really beautiful soft light. Um, so you can see there what, you know, I would include in my kit. Um, let's go to the next slide. Yeah, keep on going. Yeah, so, you know, I, I definitely use the lights for decor, but we also find that, you know, there's several points of the day that, they're just very helpful. Um, I love using them during speeches. I feel like it's such a quick setup, you know, take the light, point it at the subject, um, pull it back out quickly. This uh, was a tinted wedding in Martha's Vineyard. And for this setup, you can, you can actually see sort of, I left this one in because I wanted you to sort of see where that light was. You can see the little circle of the light behind the subject, but I basically used the hobo light as a rim light on uh, this particular shot. And I think that we had had it set up off to the side for speeches. So, you know, it works really well in that sense too. It's a strong light. Um, and then, you know, you could be using fill light from a mini. You could have, you know, your assistant is holding a mini off camera or you have it on a stand or, you know, maybe you're just even using the atmospheric light um, from the event, but it's it's really great in that application as well. Um, let's go to the next slide. Uh, this was another one, you know, just, I wanted it to feel, this was a very kind of glam New York wedding and I wanted it to have that uh, sensibility to it. I wanted it to be kind of sort of old world Hollywood glam. Um, so this was just me on the dance floor popping a light uh, into the bride's face, you know, capturing that moment and then putting it down. And and there is a lot of that when you're hand holding with the light, um, you know, so as not to blind whomever is in front of you, you know, a little bit of a pop of the light, like a flash would and then set it down. But, um, but that's a really nice way of using it as well. Um, and then couple portraits, like this was um, a fairly dark apartment, um, but I wanted to just make sure that I had some really lovely light on the couple's face. And uh, this would have just been set up out of camera from the left-hand side. You know, you're getting light coming in from that uh, window in, that's off camera on the far right, but nothing that would light the couple. So it's really just a matter of adding uh, some fill light. And this is, um, these are friends of mine who just eloped in the city, Josh, uh, Gooden and Serena, and they, um, 
their videographers and they've also commented on just how fantastic these lights can be for video as well. I mean, that's uh, honestly a big application on weddings is a, a constant light for video. So I certainly get a lot of interest uh, from my video videographer friends as well on these lights. Let's click, click ahead. Um, yeah, planning for the unknown. I mean, live events, so many things can happen, a lot to uh, think about and, you know, that you have to be prepared for. Um, it's funny, I I bought the stands and love the stands, was really happy for with those for this trip to Italy. And I just happened to get um, the mini light and the Avant to try out. I wasn't sure if I'd have time, um, but I, I went ahead and brought those along in my kit. And I got to this wedding in Italy. Everything's going fine. For one reason or another, the sunset ceremony started very late. Definitely not sunset. Well after sunset, teeny tiniest glimmer of light left in the day. And, you know, I, I was sort of in that moment of like, we need a light. I mean, I don't think I have time to set up, you know, a flash and test. There's 200 people sitting in an audience. Like, I don't think there's that, but I literally ran to my camera ba bag that was, you know, off on the side, grabbed the mini light that I had on uh, the tripod, literally this light, ran and grabbed this, pointed it at the couple, um, you know, at, the foot of the, there was sort of an, an altar and there was a little staircase. I literally just put this little light on the staircase, pointed it at them. And I mean, I'm telling you, it was the light that lit the entire ceremony. Had they not been lit with that little mini hobo light, they would have gotten married in the dark. And um, those photos, I don't have that photo on here, but um, that photo, uh, that wedding was recently on my Instagram. It was on Vogue. It was a wedding in Puglia. So you can see, I mean, it's a very dark environment, but thank goodness I had the hobo light because it completely saved me in that moment. And look, I mean, that's what happens on events. Like we can plan and we can set up our lights or, you know, we can set up our flat lays, but at the end of the day, you know, you want to be prepared with a kit that not only is dialed into your formula and the things that you just know you have to do on a job, but that's also really well set up for those moments where a surprise happens. And um, that's just been super valuable to me. Um, I think I can kick it back to you all. And maybe we can chat through a couple questions if there are any. Yeah, definitely. I want to thank you again. Corbin and the entire Hobo Light team for putting this on. We do have the questions coming in, so we'll get to them. Some of them you did answer. We had some that came in early, and then you did get them answered. Uh, one of the questions that I wanted to start with is from Erin. You answered one part of her question, but she was asking about what the environment is like using constant lights similar to a video light. Is that any different when you're out on the dance floor having a constant light versus using a strobe? Yeah, that's a good question. And, you know, I would say when the dance floor is actually bumping and the and the guests are on the dance floor, I'm really switching to the micro light or the mini light just in you know in my camera bag. So it may be that I hold that light up quickly, capture the moment. And you know, another thing I like about having a little light like that is I can add one of those color gels onto the light. They have these accessories that just sort of pop onto the front of the light. And I can almost mimic the vibe of the dance floor. So maybe it's like a really blue lit dance floor. There's a lot of red, like you can add that in and you can kind of keep that vibe without it just feeling like a bright white light and the rest of it going into a color, if that makes sense. So in that moment, I definitely recommend a bit of a like up, shoot, down, you know, like I don't, um, I don't leave it as a constant light uh, during that time. Interesting. So it's more like kind of like a run and gun style where. Yeah. You're yeah. Getting... I mean, it's not to say that I am never going to use flash again. Like there are absolutely applications for flash. Um, but I just like the way that this sort of light, this constant light, it feels more similar in my mind to what you would be getting from stage lighting 
So it like blends with the environment in a in a really nice way. Okay. So Colette out there watching had asked if you ever use flash or just these lights. I think that that pretty yeah. much covers that question yeah, there. I, think so. I mean, you just, you want to have all those tools in your pocket. Um, but yeah. Okay. Question from uh, Megan asking in particular about the dancing photo, the one in the tent from Martha's Vineyard. Did you have any modifiers on the light that you were using as a rim light? No. So that was just, well, I had the barn doors. So the barn doors come with the, um, creator kit. And I had that set just because it allows you to, you know, move the light a little bit, but, um, but no, nothing in terms of a softbox. you know, once that event gets going, it's a little tricky to have a huge soft box on the dance floor. I mean, it just, I think it looks a little strange. Um, so, and I, I find that my, the planners that I work with are not on board with that, rightfully so, but, um, but yeah, it's just a little light with the barn doors. Is that something that you'll discuss with the wedding planner? Because I think that continuous lighting has become a lot more popular now, obviously with more people having video documented, it kind of just ushered in that wave yeah. of still photographers using it. But is that some is that a discussion that goes on with the couple or with the wedding planner? You know, not so much the couple. I think that they're kind of there for the party and however that's going to unfold is um is, you know, they're on board with, but, you know, I want to be respectful to the other vendors who have put a lot of time and effort into creating that space. And um, so of course I want to give them a heads up and say, Hey, like, I love your beautiful dance floor, but we're lit by, you know, the light of the three candles on that far table. I'm going to pop a little bit of light into uh, this first dance, and then I'm going to move that light out once I'm finished. So certainly on those formal dances, I mean, the event that I shot this weekend, I actually did have this light set exactly like this with this lantern modifier. I put it at the corner of the dance floor. I said, hey, I'm going to move this out as soon as it's done. But I just wanted it to be pretty and soft. And, you know, the nice thing about hobo lights as well, like, a lot, I always get comments on what they look like. I mean, they look like a tiny, like vintage Hasselblad camera. They're cool looking and um, they don't take away from the environment. Like they, they kind of feel like old cinematic lights. And, and so I think it works. I think that adds, I mean, we're, we're in aesthetically driven culture now and whether it's a camera or a lighting setup, we want stuff that looks cool and it doesn't, you don't yeah. want it to look like you're on like a, uh, a construction site and you have construction looking lights set up. Yeah. I mean, I remember back in the day, uh, way back in the day, we brought, we would bring deer lights to weddings to, to try and shoot, uh, you know, like that rim lit look and have a deer light back behind. And, you know, of course, everybody's absolutely blinded and, and, you know, you don't want to be that photographer that is taking away from the experience. You know, you really want to enhance it. Okay. Well, as you mentioned that it's like, even the light you have there, it's pleasant. It's not, we're looking right at it and it's not like even even like a little desk light that people will use to stream sometimes it's like even after like 30 minutes of being on camera it's like okay i need a break i feel like the light yeah, is it's a really pretty light um i mean that's why i like it i mean i'm a you know i'm a photographer i came to these lights and and this process just because i had a need i certainly you know i don't have like any sort of special commercial relationship or anything like that i just um, you know, I like to find tools that work for me and will work for uh, people that I, you know, teach or, you know, other colleagues, other photographers. And I would say, you know, when I post about uh, my work, a lot of times I get DMs from other photographers just being like, tell me about that light or how are you doing this? And, you know, we're all just tr we're trying to find the right tools to make, you know, our best work. Definitely. And we did have a question coming from Cooley. So Cooley, if you're still out there watching, listening, uh, let me know if we did get to it. Because I know you did mention you'll put one of those in the corner, but Cooley asked about secondary lighting for the reception hall. Do you ever build out like you? I know you mentioned putting that in the corner, but is there any ever any lights that you'll kind of just stage across the reception hall? Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm going to bump this pro light up a little bit so you can see it. I mean, this light that I have um, just in front of behind my camera it's a really powerful light like this thing can light i mean i'm going brighter and brighter and brighter and i'm only you know at um 70 but like this thing can definitely light a room um if you had two of them absolutely like you would be in really good shape 
Um, but again, it's a question of whether or not you feel like that is going to be too much of a presence on an event. Um, certainly when you're shooting the decor, by all means, set up two lights. You know, I love a tri triangulated lighting situation. So maybe it's one light on one corner, one light, you know, on the other corner pointing towards each other. And then maybe I'm adding a small little, you know, fill light or um, table light for some of that glassware. But, um, but that's really something that would only happen for me during setup. Now, I've certainly seen um, weddings where people will set up lights and leave them. And that's just kind of a personal choice. Awesome. Well, Corbin, I want to thank you again. We did drop a link to all the various lighting kits um, that we had featured here. We have the Avant Creator Kit, the Mini Creator Kit, the Pro Creator Kit, and of course the light stands that brought you to the brand. So if you guys wanted to check out the gear that Corbin is using, definitely check those out there on the BH website. A uh, huge thank you to the Hobo Light team, to Corbin for joining us. The final question of the day is an easy one. Where can we find more of your work, Corbin? I mean, you can go to Instagram. It's just my name, Corbin Gherkin, and you can learn about my work at corbingherkin.com. My courses are at corbingherkin.com slash education. I would love to keep in touch with you all. I mean, it's so fun for me to hear from photographers and um, always a great conversation, especially, you know, through Instagram about um, just what we're doing, how we're trying to better our work. So do keep in touch. Definitely. Well, we, we'll get those links links dropped in. A huge thank you again to Corbin and the Hobo Light team. We'll close it out with a comment here from Taya. It says, Corbin, you are amazing. I love all the clever light implications you share. So, thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, Corbin, thank you. A huge thank you, of course, to you for this wonderful demo. And to all of our viewers out there watching, listening, can't do it without you. We do it for all you guys. So a huge thank you to you as well. That's it. Another edition of the BNH Virtual Event Space in the books. Catch you all next time.